Hello there, and uh, welcome. Today we're going to be playing a uh, game that's been sitting in my library for quite some time called Hermitage Strange Case Files. And as any many of you may or may not know, I am a huge fan of cosmic horror and Lovecraftian fiction. Uh, so, well, one of the reasons I got this game, and like a lot of the games in my library, it remains unknown and therefore mysterious and fearful. So today, I'm gonna give it, uh, give it a start, finally, and kind of just waiting. It's, uh, definitely giving me, like, a cool, almost persona vibe already. Obviously not to the same degree, but the music, the kind of offbeat aesthetic... I'm digging it though. It's uh, basically supposed to be, from what I gather from reading the synopsis, a Lovecraftian visual novel of sorts, which I'm all about. And um, being fairly well versed in the fiction, having read many of the stories, played a lot of stuff, uh, when things come up that are direct nods, I'll definitely try to point those out. But uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's get going here. I really do like this stylistic choices. They're, I think they're either taking a lot of inspiration from uh, from Persona 5 or or it's like a mutual thing. Oh, right here. That's an Elder Sign, one of the versions of it. There's a direct influence for sure. They say this game is purely fictional. But who's to know, you know? No one ever really knows. Oh! All right. Maybe I should give an epilepsy warning. I haven't played this game before, but that is definitely something to wake up to. She keeps her eyes closed. She can't forget what happened because something still lingers in the air. Anger, maybe? No, it's not just anger. Maybe it's regret. A jumble of thoughts sweep through her mind and the icy air is burning her cheeks. Flying is more difficult than she thought. Looks like her soul didn't sprout wings after all. Somehow, it's like she's still here. She feels relieved at the thought. And thus, the game begins. Okay. The world goes on and the clock is ticking steadily. The world doesn't owe anything to anyone so it won't listen to anyone's requests. That's a fair point. Even praying won't turn things, bad things, into good things all of a sudden. Also fair point. Therefore, those who expect a lot from the world should overthink their attitude. I think plenty of people do that. There is no joy, no sorrow, just emptiness. Which, you know, in effect is actually kind of not that bad. I mean, between sorrow and em or sorrow and joy, I mean, I guess one implies the existence of the other. So if one was gone, I guess it would be just emptiness. But it's almost like a peaceful thing, I would think. World feels heavy on her shoulders. Yeah, well, it looked like she got killed. Oh, here we go. Oh, definitely Persona vibes here. Like, just the red and black, the square capitalization here. Long story short, we will focus all our energy on the preparations for this project. Okay. Although it will take place next semester, every day we slack off now means that the other art clubs have one more day to catch up to us. Keep in mind that our elite art club has a reputation to uphold. It is essential that we are victorious in the future. Okay, so there's more than one art club, and they put elite in their name. Little pretentious, but we'll go with it. I know it's unusual for me to push you guys so hard, and I realize some of you might be uncomfortable with that. Think it over carefully for your own good. I don't want any more incidents this year. 
That's all. Any questions? What about the materials? If we're going to do oil paintings, the paint will be very expensive. That won't be a problem. Ah, your new classmate doesn't have any materials yet, does she? I'll prepare some for her. Um, I saw her with some art supplies today. <coughs> I mean, obviously, they're trying to make everybody mysterious here with these outlines. This is very dramatic. I mean, I, I mean, we're in an anime, like visual novel, so it's not even that, you know, surprising, but this is very, very dramatic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you can figure it out, see ya. Suffers from nightmares even during the day, and when it comes to such a renowned, flashy school, the shadows are still everywhere, lingering. They are relentless. Took her a whole week to figure out, to hand in her homework. Nobody even considered offering help. The teachers always seem to be in a hurry after class, avoiding contact with anyone. It is far from what she imagined. Something must be wrong with her. At least... That's what she always tells herself. That's why she came here in the first place. Her family moves around a lot. And she could never depend on her friends. Well, they're not very good friends then, I suppose. The only thing she can depend on is her hobby. Oh, what is it? Is it art? Is it drawing creepy shit? I hope so. She doesn't like to talk as long as she doesn't have to. Everything's fine. At least this school has an art club. At least. I mean, it's implied that there's more than one. She's got options from elite, apparently, at the top down to whatever. I'm actually curious what the names of the other art clubs would even be, if that's the naming convention we're using. Like subpar art club, moderate, maybe. If she doesn't need words to go about her hobbies, presumably, she won't need words to make friends. That's what she thought. It's a very interesting line of logic there however her expectations weren't met not very surprised still working on that piece just give up already the girl's smile is mean a prideful grimace to draw attention and show off to everyone around her wish i could see it the painting is a little different from what she was imagining, but she's dealing with the past bit by bit after all. The paint is still wet, but once it's dry, she will pay more attention to the details. Okay. I figured you'd want to pay attention to details as it's being painted, because once it dries, it's kind of too late. But I'm not really that... I'm, I've only ever done graphic designs, you know, painting... In high school, I dabbled with that. I did I did a painting, actually, of Che Guevara once. And I thought it was pretty good. It was like uh, black, white, and gray, right? You know, it was that iconic revolutionary picture of him. And it got shown, like, you know, nothing big, just, you know, along with a couple other paintings um, a while after I had done it, and then vanished, and I never got it back. And I have no idea what happened to it because it was uh, not on me. Like, it was taken out of my possession to be shown, like, along with a couple other paintings. And then it was just gone. So I can only assume that, you know, either someone stole it for themselves, which I doubt. Like, it was all right. It wasn't that good. Or it was probably considered too risque for my, you know, covertly racist white suburban town. And uh, they just, uh, you know, felt that was too edgy, you know, for for their tastes. Not surprised. Um, anyway, come on, just leave it. You can't participate in the next event because you haven't done your part. Understand? What are you, a mob boss? Doesn't really matter anyway. The work should be more precise. You should have left room for another line right here. Oh, oh, fuck her, dude. Like, What? Oh, leave her alone, anyway. She's gonna fall flat on her face, anyway, thinking she's... thinking she can play in the big league. Sorry, the, the fact that they used anyway twice threw me off. It was a little, seems like, redundant. 
But these these uh these two are not very uh supportive in the art world. That is, I think, usually seen as what you should be, especially like like oh you should have put a line here. It's like it's not your art. Why do you? I mean, a critique's one thing, but like saying that objectively you should have done this is like go do your own shit. Come on. Those mean words cut deep like a knife, and sadly, it's a daily occurrence. Yeah, and unfortunately, it probably is more true to life than we would think. I wish she'd be more self-aware and know what her place is. It's so annoying to have a newbie around. You're in a fucking art club. Like, what are you talking about? You don't even have a name. You're club member A, and you're trying to talk about being self-aware and knowing what your place is? I guarantee that as much shit as you want to talk about whoever the girl I'm either playing as or that is being referenced here, she probably has an actual, like, name. You are a literal black and white faceless, nameless entity that just hangs out in an art room. Your only defining characteristic is that you're basically being an ass. What does this do? Oh! Dude, super persona. Super persona. Holy shit. I really dig it, though, actually. I could, you know... You know, I was about to say they should have, like, uh, sound effects when you scroll over, and then I immediately was like, that would be cool for, like, 10 seconds, and then it would get very annoying. Come on, let's just let her sit here and rot, just like a mushroom. Mushrooms usually form on rot. They don't, I mean, I suppose they probably, I'm not like a mycologist. I I don't know if it's specific to mushrooms. Because fungus aren't animals or plants. They're like in between. They're basically aliens. It's fine. But the point is, I'm sure they can rot, but... Whenever I think mushroom, I tend to think that a mushroom grows on what is rotting. Like, that's what they thrive on. So, I guess I've never really thought about it, but I've never seen a rotting mushroom. So, I can't know for sure. I'll have to to look into this at some point. Bye. Remember what you're supposed to do. Okay. Uh, You said a lot of shit. I don't... They switch off the light as they leave, forgetting the fact that there's someone in the room. Good thing that there's this beautiful light coming in the window. There's actually two windows, but that's fine. Um, She doesn't feel like doing anything about it right now. Obviously, the fact that they forgot that she was in the room wasn't an accident. You know, it's really funny. Like, obviously, only to people that I know personally... But one of my favorite things to do... Oh, some music. Gradually, everyone leaves the building and it goes silent. But I... Whenever the opportunity presents itself... Not whenever, but more often than not. And uh, if I'm in a room with a friend or something and it's like later in the evening... One of my favorite, and I can't, for lack of a better term, pranks to pull on people that I love because it's just, for me, extremely hilarious and super harmless and incredibly easy is just, like, turning the light off as you walk out of the room. Like, just leaving them in the dark. Like, obviously, turn it back on, you know, if they need to make their way across the room, but, like... Or if they're just putting their shoes on or something and you're in a position to just turn the light off. It's like, it's just funny to leave someone in the dark. Like, and it's not even malicious. It's just innately funny to me and ultimately is incredibly harmless. Because I just turn the light back on. But it's just, it just gives me a laugh. It's like flipping that switch gives me a laugh for like a split second. And you know what? You can't have too many of those. And if you can do it to yourself, phew. You're halfway to the secret. Maybe mushrooms grow in silence. We were talking about how you were a rotting mushroom. See, this is what I'm talking about. In isolation. She would prefer to be a mushroom right now. At least people aren't outright cruel to a mushroom. I mean... I suppose, but I feel like that's debatable. I don't know enough people that have had emotional ties to mushrooms. We'll see. At most, they would casually 
crush it with one foot. That outcome doesn't seem so bad. What an odd thought to cross her mind. Yes, it is odd to think of crushing a mushroom with one foot. Like, we're, this mushroom thing. I mean, I feel like this is becoming a major theme here. In novels, students are confronted with events like this over and over again. The readers might laugh at the pers oh, the repetitiveness of the author's writing. Are we talking about the writing that I'm currently reading? It is getting kind of repetitive, but not too bad yet. However, not many people would continue laughing once events like that turn into a cruel reality for themselves. I would say so, yeah. Okay, so this is us, I assume. I do like how the slight movement, like as I move one way, there's an opposite movement of the background. You can kind of see that jiggle. That does actually add just a little bit, like fringe stuff. Only once did she manage to muster up the courage to speak out against the people ganging up on her, but it made no difference. She put up a wall around herself for her own protection. Her very own glass prison, protecting her from the cruel outside world. The whole world is against her. At least that's how she feels. In a novel, there would be two potential scenarios for her. Coming out of her shell and breaking the silence, or slowly but surely drowning in it. Okay. And she obviously doesn't have the right kind of personality for the former. Well, that's kind of mean. The broom and the dustpan are gone? How, how do you know? It's dark. She isn't surprised at the prank and just quietly closes the cabinet. Oh, so... I assume, even, I don't think it was mentioned that she's supposed to clean up with a broom and dustpan. Maybe I don't recall reading that. But they take those, without her noticing, turn the lights off. Yeah, I wouldn't give a fuck either. The classroom is more cluttered than ever. And the crumpled up paper everywhere seemed to be the trap that has been laid out for her today. What? How is that a trap? She slowly picks up a piece of paper. Eventually, they'll run out of ideas. Even if this young girl tries to deal with her emotions, the malice of the past doesn't look like it will disappear in the future. Even if she struggles to deal with her grief, the pain is relentless, taking up 24 hours of every day, as opposed to more. Even so, she doesn't give up. You're goddamn right she doesn't give up. I'm rooting for her. Oh, now this is way more interesting than club member A. I'm just saying. Ah, these guys are really... Should I turn on the lights? The shadow disappears and the room grows warm again. Because apparently that's tied to the temperature. I figured you'd still be here. Let's go back together. The world goes on and the clock keeps ticking. The world doesn't owe anything to anyone. So it won't listen to anyone's requests. Okay, we got some... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Thematic rhyming resonance with the initial time that was said. Even praying will turn bad things into good all of a sudden. Therefore, those who expect a lot from the world should overthink their attitude. That is just such an interesting way to... To try... Like, to... I'm trying to figure out what the message is there. Like... Those who expect a lot should overthink their attitude so that they can realize that that's not the way to do it, or just in general. Oh boy. Maybe that's why the moth is drawn to the flame. I mean, maybe. Are those like beholders? Those definitely look like beholders. Oh shit! Store manager. That one goes there. And this one. Okay, done. You know, I'd never played this. I was hoping it had voice acting. As I really, you know, with most things I hope it does. Not that, you know, I mean, I myself am an aspiring voice actor. As much as that's worth. But, like, I feel like this would be really, really dope if it had, like, professional voice acting in it. Hey, if anyone ever wants to make a fan dub of this game, if that's, like, legally possible, let me know. 
you can use this as a perfect case uh, as to where I may or may not be able to, uh, you know, throw myself in there. All right, enough shameless plugging. I got to think of a better voice for this guy, though, not my normal narration. That one goes there and this one. Okay, done. He definitely looks extremely world weary. It doesn't really fit. He does not look like he gives a shit. Many people simply grab books, flip through them, and then put them back. Of course, they don't check where the book originally was. This means everything's an unorganized mess with different genres and classifications thrown into one big messy pile. Yeah, I mean, I assume he said store manager, but this looks like a library, so I get a bookstore, I guess. I feel like what's the difference between a bookstore and a library other than maybe one you can't purchase them? Making sure everything is put back in its original place is probably more difficult than just place it in the first free space you see. Yeah, I mean, that's an explanation of convenience. All right, time for a break. No, just... All right, time to s smoke indoors and take a break. I mean, he's the store manager. He does what he wants. He definitely looks like he's seen some things. Those lines on his eyes. There's no sense in asking too much of yourself. Good advice. To be honest, I don't have a lot of confidence as the store manager, even though I've been doing this for the last six months. I had my doubts at first, but whatever. Gotta earn money somehow. The landlord's out for my blood. Hermitage just isn't an ordinary shop. Oh, so Hermitage is the name of the shop. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was the name of a person when I first started playing, but now we got that cleared up. If customers are only looking for something to satisfy their desire to read, most of them won't find what they're looking for here. Okay. The literature here, from the folklore of Japanese scholars in China to propaganda transcripts of new religious groups in Southeast Asia, has piled up into such a vast ocean of books that even the owner has lost his overview. Interesting. There's really a lot of obscure reading material here, and the only reasons why people stay here must either be the familiar smell of old books, or that they're looking for some very specific research material. Okay, get the Lovecraftian undertones kind of coming in here. It's always, there's always some hole-in-the-wall bookshop that's got ancient forbidden tomes or something like that, which I'm all here for, 100% here for that. There's always an interesting conversation to be had, though. I have no doubt that that store manager is an interesting person. But it doesn't seem like there are any new customers around today. After all, the storefront doesn't look that welcoming to strangers. The few regulars who come are either very quiet or have chatted way too much over the past few weeks to the point that they don't have anything interesting left to say. Wow, that is real. That is a real thing right there. Skinny customer? I mean... Um... She is, and that's not a problem. And, you know, I'd even venture to say that she's attractive, but... I feel like that's just an interesting way to refer to someone. I, I, I guess, like, you couldn't just say, like, I don't know, female customer? Or just, I don't know, customer? I don't know. Maybe I'm looking for something that isn't there. The girl's hands rest on the edge of the bookshelf, and she's silently moving her lips while browsing through the books. Over the last few months, she has become a regular visitor. Well, then how do you... You don't know her name. I guess we don't even know this guy's name either, though, so... I like her. Quietness isn't a bad thing in itself, and she has always been polite and not at all annoying. Those are great qualities. Why wouldn't you say, like, quiet girl, then? You know, I mean, I guess I guess the way I see it is, like... Bos body positivity, either way, like, is is great. I just feel like referring to someone as skinny or not skinny as an identifying characteristic as opposed to, like, quiet or just, you know, unknown customer. I just feel it's a little over the top. But, 
I'm definitely not like SJWing here. Like it's it's not that big of a deal. I just it just seemed just kind of interesting that that's the way they decided to go about it. There's so many other defining characteristics here. What's more, she once bought Voyagers of the Western Pacific in the shop, which instantly earned her some bonus points. I am not familiar if that's a real book or not, but it sounds interesting. I should try talking to her more often. I'm sure there's some good conversations to be had. I just need to finish my chores. Oh, shit. We got options, finally. Okay. Now isn't the time for a smoke. Who's saying that? If I'm having trouble with something, smoking a cigarette opens up my mind. Oh, okay, so this is like a mechanic. If I'm looking for information, I can always check out the bookcase. There aren't any noteworthy books right now. If there's nothing else to do, I sometimes go ahead and organize the shelves. There are still customers in the store, so I should do my job as the store manager first. The customer seems to have something to say. Huh. Okay. Now we have some mechanics. We're getting into the, uh... So I guess we're the, the book store owner and... Thoughts, case files, conversations, nothing here. Bookshelf isn't available. Okay. Well, I've been enjoying it so far. I mean, obviously, you know, as all good Lovecraftian stories tend to be, it's very slow burn. And uh, I can only assume this is the girl from earlier that we only see the back of her head who's being bullied and, like, you know, has... Uh, seemingly, you know, issues with depression and um, self-esteem, which, I mean, based off of how she was being treated, not surprising. Uh, so she comes to this bookstore as a regular, and she's quiet, and I want to get to know her as this character, seemingly. But uh, I think that now that we've gotten through that main arc in the beginning, and we're about to finally make some choices and decisions in this game, that'd be a good place to uh, end the episode. But uh, so far, so good. Um, I like the art style. It's kind of like a... It's like a, yeah, like a very Persona 5-esque, but obviously with a much different tone visually. Lots of uh, more neutral colors um, than uh, Persona 5. I even see like up here we got our day counter. And I can only assume that either, yeah, we're going to gain more options as we go, or these are going to expand into things. And I'm curious to see how the mechanics of this are going to work. I feel like it's going to be like a detective thing. Because it's called Hermitage Strange Case Files. So I assume people come in, you talk to them, and you try to figure stuff out, and then smoke cigarettes when you can't. Which I suppose, you know, that's a pretty real thing too i feel like or at least in the movies that's what they do well in any case uh i hope you've enjoyed the episode so far and i look forward to continuing to play this have a good one